Your word is settled. It's settled in heaven. It shall be settled in our hearts this morning. In the name of Jesus. Shall be seated. Praise the Lord. Tell somebody, I'm adorned with the beauty of heaven. Tell somebody again, I am adorned with the beauty of heaven. I am robed with the beauty of heaven. I am clothed with the beauty of heaven. That's a theme for our morning worship or our morning message. Adorned with the beauty of heaven. Many of us are not aware, and I mean those of us in Christ, that we are adorned or what we can call decorated. Or in other words, we are decked with the beauty of heaven. Everyone in Christ. It's adorned with the beauty of heaven. And when we talk about the beauty of heaven, it's not talking about just physical beauties alone. It's talking about the empowerments. It's talking about the glories of God that God has designed for our lives. Praise the Lord. Every one of us has been adorned and decked and robed with the beauty of heaven. And this beauty of heaven is encapsulated divine wisdom for us to express. It's also encapsulated the power of the Holy Spirit for us to be able to fulfill every intended purpose that God has designed for our life. We are done with the beauty of heaven. And many are not aware of this. And that is we are done with both spiritually and material blessing, uh, uh, beauty in heaven. This is what our status in Christ Jesus now is. And if you don't know it, you cannot enjoy it. We are done with the beauty of heaven. Because all that our faith life seems about is knowledge of the truth of God's word. That's all that our faith life is all about. Is to have knowledge of the truth of God's word concerning our life in Christ Jesus and believing in the same. That's all this faith life is about. Having the knowledge of the truth of God's word concerning our life in Christ, what we are made in Christ, what we have been given in Christ, what we can do in Christ. And when we believe in the shape, this empowers you and me through the power of the Holy Spirit to take pragmatic steps. Any time you come to understand the state in which you are in Christ, you are empowered to take pragmatic steps in achieving the goals that God has set for as in the kingdom that we now belong to. There are goals to set. Jesus didn't leave us here just to guess, eat, and be cruising around, and sleep and wake up, and just be uh, doing things. Only that is limited to this ecofiscal department of his universe. He came to die, and he was raised again, and he left for a purpose. That's why he said the Holy Spirit should come and take his place. The faith life is about knowledge of the truth of God's word. And that's not what we are seeing now in this dispensation of grace in these last days. It's about knowledge of the truth of God's word. And one very basic understanding of the truth of God's word is in the New Testament. It talks much about our life in Christ. In the Old Testament, God was talking about what he was going to do. Talking about the nation of Israel and giving uh, a paradoxical statement with regards to how that he was going to do things, great things and amazing things in these last days, which he had already begun to do and which he is completing. It's just about a short time and our Lord Jesus will come back. We get empowered when we have understanding of the truth of God's word. That's where the power of God is sizing. That's where the glory of God is sizing. That's where the miracle of God is sizing. Knowledge about the truth of God's word. Let's look at some of the beautiful things the Lord designed for the body of Christ before even Jesus came into this material world. Before Jesus came to accomplish his purpose, the Lord had written several in the Old Testament concerning the beautiful things that he has set down for the, or he has made us into, to come into, to enjoy. 
This scripture we are about to read is the same portion of the scripture that Jesus once read in the temple then and said it was written concerning his mission on earth. That's Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61, the verses 1 to 7. Isaiah chapter 61. We read it and we have not come to the full import of what it means with regards to our life in Christ. Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 7. Although most of the writings in the Old Testament, the Lord begins with the nation of Israel by in between he inserts the body of Christ. So if you are reading and you are not careful, you might not know what it means. You might only attribute it to the nation of Israel. Before Jesus came, Isaiah was filled with the Spirit of God. And in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 to 7, Isaiah prophesied this. He said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. He used the word, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. When you see capital L, O, R, D, capital L and small O, small R, D, that refers to Jesus. But when you see capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, it refers to the Godhead. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. The Lord here is capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The Godhead have anointed me to preach good tidings or good news unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. That is where most of us have pitched our tents. Yes, we have accepted Jesus Christ, so we are delivered from powers of darkness. But there's more to it than that. The verse 2 says, To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn in Zion. And the verse 2 says, To appoint unto those that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. He said he's to appoint unto them that morning Zion. Are you morning Zion? He said this is the reason why Jesus came. He knew that the devil in his absence was buffeting and doing all that he can. Placing sicknesses, putting challenges and troubles. He said, he has come to take away this morning to give unto us beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that we might be called the trees of righteousness, the plant of the Lord, that he might be glorified. He, the Lord, might be glorified. He is doing this, he's bringing this beauty to bear in our love, that he might be glorified. So anyone that sees you say, oh, wow, of a certainty, our Lord God is alive, and he has done these amazing things that is marvelous in our sight. The prophet Isaiah concluded by saying that all these beauties that God is decorating the believer in Christ with, he's doing so that the Lord's name will be glorified. Not us. So this beautifying of the body of Christ is all about him. Every beauty in our life is about him. He wants to showcase his glory. He wants to boast to the hidden. He wants to boast to those of us, those of the people of the world that have rejected him. That look, you've rejected me. Look at this one. He was Worse than you look, you saw him, but now look at the transformation. Praise the Lord. It's all about him. That people will magnify or glorify his name for his amazing works amongst men. Though we did not deserve it, but out of the abundance of his mercies, he chose to decorate us with the beauty as a showcase of his unqualified love for us. He's beautifying our love as a showcase of his unqualified love. Not that we deserve it. Not something that we have done. Look at me. When somebody had told me yesterday, yes, that I was standing in the midst of a congregation to talk this way, and that God will beautify us with a temple like this, I will not believe it. No. I was far away. Far away in total darkness. Far away in the seas of trouble. In the oceans of the world. Where whales are so much cumbered around looking to devour. But God in his infinite mercy and love took me out. And he has placed me that I can have this privilege and opportunity to talk to decorated, beautiful, awesome, honorable men and women like you. It takes only the love of God to do this. Hallelujah. 
So it's about him. He chose to decorate you and me with his beauty as a showcase of his uncalled life. He said I will, he will give us beauty in the place of ashes. He will give you and me beauty in the place of ashes. You see, when ashes are made reference to, it is to tell you the leftover states. Or it is to tell you the wreckage state, the wreckage, the ruined states of a thing of a matter. When you make mention of ashes, they are remains of a matter. They are things that has no use again. So he said, he's giving us beauty in the place of the ashes that we find ourselves. So the state in which Jesus came to meet us was not a good state. That's what the Bible is telling you now and me. No matter what you think you were in the world, it said it wasn't a good state. He created you. He knows your state. So he said it's not a good place. Before Jesus came into the scene, it was, our step was in one of, that had wreckage, it was ruined beyond the repairs of man and his technology. Man's technology couldn't have brought us out of that ruined state in which we find ourselves. You might look at yourself, but pastor, I don't see how I was ruined. You were. Do you want to know you were ruined? If Jesus had not come to save you, your eternal abode will be in the lake of fire. So we're ruined. So here in the verse 3, the verse, the verse 3 of the Isaiah chapter 61, the Lord Jesus is saying, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit's anointing, that was the spirit of Christ speaking to Isaiah. Because Jesus read the same scripture and said, this scripture had been fulfilled in your ears. That means they were talking about him. So the Lord Jesus is saying, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit's anointing and power to work in his life, all those that mourn in Zion, or for that matter, the kingdom of God, his coming. His coming is to bring a change in situation for our lives. And one of the areas of the change is that he's come to bring beauty to our ruined and abandoned states. Where ruined, we are abandoned by God. The woman man sinned in the Garden of Eden. God drove him out of the garden. And we never had God coming to have that wonderful fellowship as he used to do with Adam and Eve when he comes and says, Adam, Adam, and they have fellowship to the day he came and he said, Adam, where are you? Adam said, I was naked, and so I hid myself. And God asked him, who told you I'm naked? Ever since then, the life of man was ruined. We were destined for eternal damnation and eternal separation from God. That's the state. So Jesus is saying, now that he's in our life, he's come to change our situations. He's come to bring beauty to our ruined and abandoned state. As a believer in Christ, is your life crumbling? Is it ruined and abandoned? Jesus is saying that now that he has taken over your life as you confess his lordship and has submitted to his ways every ugliness. There's no ugliness around us again. You might think so. He said, every ugliness in our life is working it out to make it beautiful. And he's doing so behind the scenes. Every day the Lord is touching us in very unique ways. Every day, every moment, even as you sit down now, the Lord is touching you by his spirit in a unique way. For a particular purpose, to change a kind of situation that you are in that you don't know. Even situation that you are yet to enter. He's changing them behind the scenes. He comes to stand by and pat you and say, my son, it is well. Not that it shall be well. It shall be well is in the Old Testament. But now that he has come, when he touches you, he said, it is well. Praise the Lord. Didn't you hear? He said, it is well with our soul. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every ugliness in our life is working it out and making them beautiful. This is what the beauty for ashes means or stands for. And not only that, but he also went further to say he came to a point as for joyous moments. So when I see believers becoming so, I can't describe it, moody. He said he came to a point joyous moment instead of mourning and grieving. Most of us love grieving. But he said he came to a point, come to us, moments of joyous moments instead of mourning, grieving, sorrowing, and lamenting because of the challenges in this last days. He said he came to appoint unto us joyous moment. He knew the world would be in the state in which it is now. Jesus knew it. God the Father knew it. The Holy Spirit knew it. This world we're in now is not going to change. 
That's what Bible says. When men are saying peace, peace, he said, be careful. Sudden destruction is coming. The more they try to repair the economy of this world, the more the economy disintegrates. I'm telling you. The more they try to push in, what money have they been pushing into the world system? It's not working. And he also came to clothe up with a garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness in that the enemy always tries to burden us so our joy will be curtailed. Look, as a child of God, despite the situation you find yourself, God expects you to be full of joy. He said, rejoice, I say rejoice, always, for this is the will of God concerning Christ Jesus. That is God's word. And when you believe the same and you take steps to act the same, then he will come into the situation and change your situation. But here you are, he said, rejoice, rejoice, and you are moody, moody, it's not going to work. That means you are saying, Lord, your word is not true. You don't know what trouble I'm going through. Was Jesus not what his disciples when the boat was sinking? He was there. Was the devil afraid? No. He tried to sink the ship anyway, but Jesus was sleeping. He was at rest because he knew that no matter what the devil does, he cannot achieve his purpose. So he slept. In the same way, when we come to understand the love and the goodness of God and his purpose and plan for our life in Christ. In the midst of the challenges, we still can find a smile on our lips. We still can find a joy on our faces. That we joy in the midst of the challenges. Because we have a beauty that we have been adorned with. When you understand that beauty, sometimes it's just a matter of time. The beauty will show forth. Hallelujah. It's clothed us with a garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness that the enemy always tries to burden us with. So that means in the midst of the challenges, God expects you to praise him, you know? And you can't praise the Lord when you are not full of joy. When you are melancholy, when you are so sad, you can't praise the Lord. So that's why he said rejoice. So you can have that power, that ability. You can come to that place of disposition where you can lift up your holy hands and say, Lord, I thank you that though this challenge is a me around, but it has not been able to put me down because of your presence. And I know you are bringing me out. Hallelujah. That's the way to go over the situations in this world. Having confidence assurance. Bible says in all our ways we should acknowledge him. And he will direct our path. So we should see from our own understanding. Sometimes yes there are plans that we have as individuals. And there are plans that maybe friends might give to you. Concerning a given situation to come out. But Bible says we should see from our own understanding. Say in all our ways, what we need to do is to acknowledge what he says concerning our life in Christ. He said, it should come to pass. And I know God said, our life has been adorned with the beauty of heaven. Surely it will come. Maybe as you sit down right now, you don't have even one seed in your pocket. That doesn't mean you are poor. No. No. Praise the Lord. No. Hallelujah. And what situation are we facing that, that Jesus didn't face? He was asked to pay tax. He didn't have money. All his followers didn't have money. But there was a way out. In the same way, every time we come to a crossroad, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us, will always give us a way out. It's only we don't listen. We don't listen. We don't give keen attention to his word. We don't heed to the promptings in our inner man by his spirit. He's giving you direction, but because you can't hear, so you can't even understand the direction, so you are there at the crossroad, you don't know where to go. And you stand there till Satan is able to come just as the Egyptians were following the Israelites and you come and meet you and hit your back. But Egyptians never met Israel. The Israel. Hallelujah. Before they came there, they had gone far off. And when they followed them to the river, into the water, that was their doom day. Praise the Lord. The devil is always meant to see doom days when he tries to pursue us and to buffet us in life. If only we can be able to pick divine signals. You know, you know uh, what they call them? Goats. If a foolish dog dares follow a goat, he's going to have a problem. When I was kids, they said, a punchino break. But hey, they have breaks. If a foolish dog dares to follow a goat, he's going to have a problem. And then one time... Uh, a dog followed the goat and the goat ran out. When he saw a big truck coming on the main highway, 
he it intentionally went into the road. And when the big truck was near, it held the brake. And you know the dog can't hold a brake, and so the dog passed. Pop. And the big truck hit it. So now the ghost stopped running. He now started walking and said, I told you so. I told you you're going to be in problem. You didn't believe me, I told you. Here you are now. And he, it worked that way. We can do the same to the devil if you understand God's word. That's what God is expecting us always to do to the devil. He follows us. We hear the promptings. He said, when you go to the left or to the right, you will hear a voice behind you that this is the way. Praise the Lord. If God will know that, no, this is the way to let the uh, enemy be killed, that he breaks, he saw the car, and he breaks and went back. We are more intelligent than ghosts. Hallelujah. We are done with the beauty of heaven. The psalmist confirmed this picture of some of the portion of prophet Isaiah saying, when he documented in Psalm 30, if you go to Psalm 30, can we get to me Psalm 30, the verse 11 to 12? Look at what the psalmist said, which gives you a, some more, it throws more light on what the psalmist is trying to say concerning God's beauty for our life. He said, thou hast turned for me my morning into dancing. As, uh, Psalm 30, verses 11 to 12. Jesus should tell you that the psalmist was in a predicament. He was in a predicament. He was in a challenge. He said, you, the Lord has turned for me, for him, the morning into dancing. Thou has put off my sackcloth. What sackcloth? Sackcloth depicts wretchedness. It depicts uh, poverty. You know sackcloth? He said, the Lord has put off my sackcloth and guarded me with gladness. He's changed my situation and he has brought joy to bear to the end that my glory may sing praises to thee and not be silent. Oh Lord my God, I'll give thanks to you forever. Have you seen that? He says there's the need for us to always be in that disposition to give thanks to God at every given moment in every given situation because God has already changed the situation. When he died on the cross, it's because you don't know. Yours is just to know it, believe it, and the situation shall be changed. It doesn't matter how long it takes, it should change. Praise the Lord. This is the reason why we cannot but give thanks and praise to God in every given situation. Because he's always behind the scenes, bringing us from our present state into our estates. Praise the Lord. No matter your present state, the Lord is patting you every day. He's earmarking for you a new state, a glorious state. In his kingdom. Hallelujah. The beauty and honor God has designed for our life in Christ. That's what the Lord is bringing you. That's your estate. Glory and beauty. Honor and beauty. There's one thing the prophet Isaiah said again in the book of Isaiah 60 concerning our beautification in the Lord. Isaiah 60, the verses 21 to 22. Isaiah 60, 21 to 22. Isaiah 60, 21 to 22. He said, your people also shall be righteous. He's talking concerning Christ Jesus before his coming. He said, every follower of Jesus shall be righteous. He said, it showed your people that people also shall be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. The branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I might be glorified. So it's all about him. He said, the people shall be righteous. You think it's what you did that made you righteous? No, it's because of your confession of his lordship and because of what he did on the cross. He has taken away your unrighteousness and replaced you with the righteousness of God. So he said, your people also shall be righteous and they shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I might be glorified. A little one, look at that, shall become a thousand. A little one. He's talking about increases and expansion. He's talking about the numerous of blessings that is going to come into your life he said a little one shall become a thousand and a small one a great nation i the lord will hasten it in his time he said he will make sure he will make the thing fast when the time is due no wonder the bible says in his time he makes all things what beautiful he said a little one shall become a thousand so you talk to yourself me like me me You are seeing yourself as me like me, but God is seeing you big. He said, and a small one. Me small like this. You say, one day I will come to inherit this thing. The Lord said, you're wasting it. It's just a matter of time. Hallelujah. 
This means there ought to be a change of story for every Christian who has decided to wholeheartedly follow Jesus and to walk in his ways for his life. The problem is we don't wholeheartedly give our life to Christ. We don't wholeheartedly follow him. But every one of God's beloved ones that wholeheartedly chooses to follow Christ and to walk in his ways, obviously, there will be a change of story. It might take months, it might take years, it might take what, but there shall be a change of story before you depart from this earth. There's always a change of story, brothers and sisters. Otherwise, the Bible will not say the path of righteous like a shining star. There's always going to be changes. We are not experiencing a change because we don't know even what the changes that God has said concern our life. There's always going to be changes. That's why I said, as a child of God, if this year you are this way, the following year you are the same way, the third year you are the same way, the fourth year you are the same way, the fifth year you are the same way, it should be a source of concern. It should be a source of concern. You are not meant to be so. Every moment of our life, every day, every week, every month, every year, there's meant to be a type of glory that God has designed for our lives. Every given moment, every given time, every given week, every given month, every given year. If you don't have that at the back of your mind, you remain where you are. You are meant to have something different working in your life, in your business, in your career, in your home. It's meant to be better. So if it's retrogressing, that's where you need to go to knock to the door. He said, ask and you shall find sick. Ask and you shall what? Find sick. And knock and the door shall be open. Say, ask, you shall receive. Sick, you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. So when you see that things are not changing, then that's when you need to go to ask. You seek in your knock. And things will change because he said, call on to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. This means there ought to be a change of story for every one of us. And this is one of the reasons why the Holy Spirit is here. To bring, to make sure that the beauty of them for our lives in the kingdom of God gets established in our life. This is why he's here. So he's tabernacled in us as a supernatural partner. The Holy Spirit has come to reside in you as a supernatural partner. He's come as a partner. He doesn't work alone. Most of us think when the Holy Spirit he has to work alone. No, no, no. He has come that we work together with him. We are partnership and we have a participation. So he does his part, we do our part. If he's telling you, don't go this way, and you walk that way, what do you want him to do? If he tells you, no, wait a little while, and then you want to move on, what do you want him to do? If he says, no, 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 those words that you want to speak, don't speak, it's not good, it's not going to bring the glory to bear, and you say, I will speak it, then your partnership surely is in ruin. And that's what most of us are doing to the Holy Spirit. And Bible says we should not grieve the Spirit of God that has given to us for the day of adoption. We should not grieve him. The way we talk, the way we act, our disposition, we grieve him. He said, let joy fill your heart. You are in a mood of sorrow. He said, take this step. You said, no, I will take that step. He said, don't go there. He said, I'll go there. He said, do not be equally yoked with unbelievers. He said, I will be equally yoked with unbelievers. Really? Great. That's the reason why we are not experiencing the beauty. He's here, he's tabernacling us to help us fulfill a given purpose, to help us put on that robe of beauty that God has designed for us. That's the purpose why he's here. But if you don't listen to him, if you don't heed to his calling, if you don't heed to his promptings, what is he going to do? He doesn't force. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So he's the spiritual partner that we have to help us achieve the intended purpose for God for our life. This is just the tip of the iceberg of our beauty in the kingdom because of the accomplished work Jesus did accomplish on your behalf and because of the coming of the Holy Spirit to reside in us. It's just the tip of the iceberg. We are done with beauty. Brothers and sisters, you are done. I am done with beauty. And we are truly decorated with the honor of the Lord in this dispensation of grace. You are decorated. That's your place. That's your Status now in Christ, a place of decoration, decorated with honor, decorated with beauty. And many in the faith are yet to know this. When you have this at the back of your mind, any challenge that looms up, you know that you will know the end of it. Praise the Lord. You know the loom of it. You know, Cassius Clay Muhammad Ali in those times, he had a way. When you want to give you a job that you go down the canvas, he has a kind of certain style. He moves towards you and gives you his head, and as you blow, he turns it back. As you blow, he goes down. As you blow, he goes down. So that what he does is to lure you to come closer. 
and he'll be telling you so that he'll ha- give you an uppercut from here. So as he does, as he does, for the pop, he's giving it to you, and you are down, you are dazed off. Because you least expect that he'll hit you. So every time he comes to the arena to fight, he already has a premeditated plan that he wants to knock you down. That was his plan. He will not wait for you to wear him down to the 15th round so maybe the judges might be corrupt and they will give points to you. No, no. And for no matter how you beat him, after the canvas, when you go down the canvas, he is supposed to get the belt. So he had a plan. So God has a plan for you and me already. That's why the Holy Spirit is there with us. He knows how we can get around the situation. He knows better. He is the master strategist. But we don't give him attention. Many of us even don't know how to respond to himself. We don't even know when the Holy Spirit is even talking. We don't know when he's prompting. We don't know when he's giving us signal. We don't even know. We don't even remember that there's somebody called the Holy Spirit. Unless you come to church and say the Holy Spirit. Oh, the Holy Spirit. You see, the lack of complete knowledge of this and many reasons why Christians across the globe are still flirting with this world order and her principles. This ought not to be so. Many are flirting with this world order. Many of us are flirting with this world order. Because we lack knowledge, we don't understand. We think we should play by the rules, the worldly rules, so that we can also be like them. No! There's a way we have been destined to operate. There's a way we have been carved to go. It might not look good, but that's where God wants you to go. And the glory is coming from him. He knows the end. The lack of complete knowledge is the more reason why most of us are flirting with the world and the challenges are propounding. Yes, today it will be good, tomorrow it will be worse. Challenges are propounding. If they knew this revelation, he can come with all his stars. Hallelujah. He can punch all punches. But as a child of God, we have been, dis- we have been designed in such a way that there's a weakness in the devil that when we hit, he's going to get his, himself off. Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. Can you imagine that the devil fly, runs away? He said, resist him. He resists him. No matter how your age or maybe your, 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 your days in the Lord, you can resist him. Let's continue with Isaiah chapter 61, the verse 4 to 7. It says, and they shall build the old ways place. He's talking still about some of our beauty. The things that have been ruined when before we came to know Christ, he said we can build them up our life. He said, and they shall build the old waste. And they shall raise the former desolations. That's the verse 4, Isaiah 61, verse 4 to 7. And they shall repair the waste cities and the desolation of many generations. This is still referring to the followers of Christ. He said, and strangers shall stand and feed your flocks. And the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers, but ye shall be named. <laughs> I love that. Verse seven. He said, "For you." He said, "For verse six. He said, "But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall you boast yourself." God knows why He says this. So we call the priest of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And the verse 7 is the big one. It says, for your shame, you shall have double. He's not talking about double anointing. No, 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 no. We don't even ask a matter of I don't have any double anointing. An anointing is an anointing. You see, the Bible is there to explain itself. Sometimes when we read the Bible and we see certain words and we don't understand what it means, the Bible says, his word has his mate. It has one to explain it. So it's better you go to, you can have a place that explains. He said, for your shame, you shall have double. And for confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess the double. He's saying again, everlasting joy shall be turned unto them. As he has said, for any shame that the enemy has earmarked for our lives, each shame shall be turned to double. Which means it shall be turned to praise and fame. And Zephaniah gave us what it means. If you go to Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19. Can you put Zephaniah 3, 19, and you see what it means by this double? For your shame, you will have double. Isaiah 3, 19, he said, Behold, at that time, I will undo all that afflict thee, and I will save, or means deliver, he that holds. When he talks about hell theft, he's talking about someone that limps, or is full of calamities or misfortune. He that 
hot. That means you are limping like this and you are not able to walk right or you are full of calamities or you are full of misfortunes. He said he get a hair that was driven out. That means people that are cast out. You look at a cast away your family, you look at a cast away your society and I will get them praise and fame. Have you seen that? You get them what? Praise and fame in every land where they have been put to shame. It's the same thing. So Zephina is telling us what the double means for our shame. Fame, praise, and fame. And fame that means honor or authority. So he will give us praise and authority. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The book of Ezekiel Texas lays more emphasis on what God did through Christ because of our salvation. I would like us to just have a few, look at just a few things that ought to happen in our lives when we get saved. Look at that. Few things that ought to happen in our lives when we get saved. The whole book of Ezekiel chapter 36, but we just take from verse 26, 27, 33, 36. It's talking about Israel, but then if you go further, you find out that it's talking about our salvation in Christ. In the verse 26, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, A new heart also I will give you. A new heart. Haven't you received a new heart when you got born again? And a new spirit will I put within you, and I'll take away the stony heart of your flesh, and I'll give you a new heart of flesh. You know, most of us were so stubborn when we were outside of Christ. So stubborn. So hardened hearted. No matter what they say, you won't listen. You think you are the Lord and master of your life. But when we came to know Christ, you know, he said our hardened heart was softened, but he replaced it with a heart of flesh, a heart of understanding, a heart that will receive correction. Some of us never could be corrected. But he said he's now giving us a heart of correction that we can receive counsel, we can receive correction. We can receive, we can be chastised, and we will accept our chastening. Praise the Lord. He said, I will put my spirit within you, the verse 27, and cause you to walk in my status, and you shall keep my judgments and do them. You see, he said he will bring, when the Holy Spirit comes to bear in our lives, he says, we are able to keep the judgments of God or walk according to his precepts. Then verse 33, that said the Lord God, in the day that I shall have cleansed you from all your iniquities, I will also cause you to dwell in the cities and, and the way shall be builded and the desolate land shall be tiled, whereas it was desolate in the sight of all that passed by. And they shall say, this land that was desolate is become like the garden of Eden. And the ways and desolate and ruined cities have become fenced and are inhabited. Verse 36, then the hidden that are left round about you shall know that I, the Lord, build up these room places and the plant that has, that was desolate. I, the Lord, have spoken and I will do it. This is amazing. Amazing act of the Lord intended for every one of us in Christ. If only we have knowledge of this and believe this saved. He said, situations are going to turn around when Christ is in our lives. For us to know the beauty, the perfection of the beauty in the kingdom of God, that the perfection that God has given us in the kingdom has already been established. And that it is our faith and pragmatic steps taken now in accordance with the scripture that makes the beauty of God upon our lives visible. We need to know that the perfection of beauty in the kingdom God has already been made, has already in the kingdom that God has designed for us has already been made possible. And that it is the faith and pragmatic step taken now in accordance with scripture that makes this beauty of God upon our life visible. To know and to acknowledge the psalmist in Psalm 50 verse 2 says, out of Zion the perfection of God has shine." He said, out of Zion, the perfection of God has shine. He said, look, what will ever make your beauty to be perfect? He said, God has already given you the instrument, the tool. He has given you whatever you need to make your beauty perfected. No one lacks in the kingdom of God. No one. What will make your beauty come into this place? God says in the book of Psalm 50, the verse 2, he said, God has given to you. He said, because God has shine. Why? Because Jesus came to die. And when he died, he rose again. He didn't remain in the grave. And he ascended into heaven. And when he was going, he gave us the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit is residing in us to make sure that where Jesus, where Jesus had completed, he will establish the same. Hallelujah. God initially promised to make the nation of Israel a kingdom of priests. This is what God initially planned. Was to make the nation of Israel a kingdom of a priest and a holy nation. 
Are you aware? But he later turned his attention to a church by adorning her with the beauty of being a royal priest for a holy nation. If you go to Exodus chapter 19, the verses when God sent Moses to deliver Israel, he told him this. He said, and you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. He said, Moses, tell him. And a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto a children of Israel. God told Moses to tell them. He said, you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. But it didn't work. And a holy nation. It didn't work. That's what the Bible says that uh, now we have been grafted into the main vine. So they have been cut off for a period of time. So the attention of God now is on us. The church. Other than Israel. But Israel still believe that uh, they, are, they have the attention of God. <laughs> Finally, it's working for them. And we who got attention on us, we don't believe that God's attention is on us. Even as I say right now, that, oh, the beauty that God has done, some of us are sitting and saying, wow, I wish it was true. Yes, it is true. <laughs> he said, Pastor, you don't know. If you know what is going on in Dodoa Forest, you will not be saying what you are saying. Yes, I know. Praise the Lord. I thank God I'm not a pastor that is far about my people. I'm just within the domain. Whatever you experience, I experience. Do I want to experience the same? Whatever you go to, I go through the same. In order that I can come out and know the practical way. So when I'm teaching the word, I say it as it is. And I believe the same. You have been adorned with beauty. If you don't know, you remain that way. Your father can be the best billionaire in the world and can stash, stash billions of dollars in your account and he tells you that, my son, I've left you this money. And then he shows you a will that your name is written in it. And then at his demise, you sit down and you don't pick the will and go and claim your money. Whose fault? Whose fault? Have you seen that? And that's what we are doing. Your father can stash billions of dollars in your account and show you the will. He might not give you a checkbook, but he'll show you the will. The will stands as a guarantee for the money he has touched there. You only need to get a lawyer to explain the will. Is that not it? So if you sit down and you refuse to take the will and take the necessary steps and find a lawyer, that you will see how you go to bank and then cash, take the money, collect your father's death certificate. Is that not it? And any other thing that you need, and we call something, you go to court, how do you call it? L.A., is it? Letter of administration. And you sit down. <laughs> you have billions. You can't talk foco out of it. This is what is happening to the church in these last days. Christ has earmarked for us beauty and glories of heaven. And he has given us a will. Bible says until the testator dies, a testament is not in force. Is Jesus dead? Yes, he's risen, but he died. Is he risen? Yeah, he's gone to heaven. So now he has left out with a will. And he has shown us the way out. Many things that he has said concerning us. Our life in him. If we don't take the pragmatic steps, we are going to remain the way we are. That's what is happening. Hallelujah. That's what we in the church. It's not that because the pastor didn't pray for you. It's not that because somebody didn't prophesy in your life. They are not the foundation for our, our honor and glory and beauty in Christ. Yes, there are something that helps. But look, when you rise up as a child of God in the world and you begin to understand your status and your right and privilege in Christ and understand the status quo and the keys God has given to you, if you use it, I'm telling you, you don't need prayer. You don't need prophecy. As a matter of fact, you are born out of prophecy. Because the word of God is prophecy. Is that not it? He said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. Where will you do well if you hold on to it? And when we talk about that, people are thinking about people, somebody prophet. He's talking about the word of God. So if you hold on to it as a light that shines in darkness till the day down and the day start arising in your heart. He said, when you get hold on the word and you hold on to it and you make effort to take pragmatic steps, he said, a day will down in your life. You don't need a pastor prayer to get the beauty of the Lord, to get adorned with the beauty of the Lord. Although the pastor prayer is good, you don't need the prophet prophesying. 
to let you get into the glory God has given for you. It is there for you when you rise up. That's what Bible says, arise and shine. Do you tell the pastors to arise and shine? He said, every one of us, arise and shine. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Arise, you as an individual. He didn't say the pastor should arise for you. We have our duty to do and that's what I'm doing, to teach you the word and to understand. He said, arise. So that means you are sitting down. If you don't arise, your beauty will be there. You will leave the beauty here and get to heaven and you will cry when you look back and see the beauty. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God initially promised the nation of Israel a kingdom of priesthood and a holy nation, but later he turned his attention to the church by adorning her with his beauty of being a royal priesthood and a holy nation. But still Israel is thinking that they are the holy nation. They think they are the priesthood. And so they are daring the unbearable. <laughs> a small nation, a small group of people with a small land. Let all those around them come against them. They have that inner understanding that God is with them. And because of that, they are fighting battles and people are scared of them. Small nation. Their faces are small as my face. Not that they are giants. No, 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 no. It's like they are small faces like my small face. Like this. That's the way they are. You look at their faces. Some of us, when we see something, when they're drawing something, they're drawing with muscles. Something didn't have any muscles. He was just as skinny as I am. But he took them gates because he knew God was with him. Even when he had done that, on pardon after he still went and took a gate and left. It's our confidence in what God says in Allah that brings the beauty to bear. Hallelujah. So he told Israel, he told Moses to tell Israel, you shall be unto me a king of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Israel. But look at that. When we come to the book of First Peter chapter 2, the verse 9, Bible said, but you are a chosen generation. I am you in Christ, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. The same promise. God is now turning back onto us. He's turning his eyes onto us. He said, a peculiar people. Even them, he didn't add a peculiarity. He said, we are peculiar. We are purchases. God pitches possession. That you should show forth the praise of him that have called you out of darkness in the marvelous life. So how do you show forth? He said, showcase it. And here we are. He said, showcase that glory. Hallelujah. He said, you are peculiar. You've been made a priest and a king. That means, <laughs> you see, when the choice of words in the Bible is good to look at them into detail. When they say you are a priest, a priest is somebody who does what? Who intercede on behalf of people to God? Is that not it? He, 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 he offers sacrifice at the altar. Is that not it? And a king is what? A king is a ruler. His words are law. Bible says where the word of a king is, is, is what? There is power. And who may say unto him, why do you do what you do? So God is telling you here in the book of Peter that look, we have that ability to go straight into the presence of God and have fellowship and seek for his indulgence and then also caught his power and his blessing to do what we want to do. And he said, when we speak the words, that's why Job said, when you shall decree a thing also and it shall be established unto you. And said, so your pathway shall be bright, made bright. And when men are cast down, you will see this lifting up. So he so said, we are peculiar in nature. We have this Royalty lineage in us, we have the kingship lineage in us. We can come boldly before God and ask for his indulgence, ask for his help. We can also make decrees because of our kingship nature. And you sit there and see somebody prophesying in your life, go and stand by the mirror. Look, I say, Bonsu, you are a royal bonfire property of a child of God. You have been given a place in the kingdom. You have been adorned with beauty. Surely the beauty shall speak in your life. I decree that from this day, you are breaking forth to the right hand. I say, Bonsu, you are breaking forth to the left hand. You think God will call me pastor? <laughs> He'll call me pastor. Call me your say, or he'll call me Bonsu. Yeah, even as a matter of fact, the day I was born. Yeah, Bonsu. That's the way he's going to call me. He said, you call me pastor and say, when was I born? Who am I before him? He just is love that has given us that advantage, added value that we can come before him. You go look at yourself and speak to the situation. When God took Ezekiel and brought him into the valley of the what? Of the dry bones. And God asked him, Ezekiel, can this bone live again? He said, Lord, you knows. 
I said, great. That means he's seeking his indulgence. I'm happy that you have understood that I know. Then he said, then if I know that I'm going to tell you what to do. He said, speak to this boss. Speak to that, speak to that. Did God spoke into it? No. And Ezekiel spoke, and he spoke, and he spoke, and the dry bone became a great mighty army. Your life might be dejected. Your business might be cast down. But you see, God has given us that priesthood ability. And he has given us also that kinship ability that we can speak into the situation. Most of us, our problem is that we are not speaking into the situation that we find ourselves. The calamities are hitting you left and right and you sleep and you get up. And you eat, you sleep, you get up. You sleep, you get up. You sleep and it's getting more entrenched. I've told people that, look, when you pour, spit a saliva on the wall or a flame on the wall, it will be easier to clean at this early stage. But when you wait till the flame gets dried, in the process of cleaning, you have to use a, a scrub. And when you are scrubbing, you must scrub a form of a paint of the wall. You take away some of the beauty. That's the way some of us have been waiting too long for the situation. So when you, before you come out of it, there are bruises all over your leg. There are bruises all over your life. At the early stage, when the devil tests him, Bible says, do not give him a foothold. And you have been given power to decree things and to speak to him. He said, resist him. And you will sit down. Allow the devil to do what he wants to do and do and do and bring you to a wit and now you'll be crying looking for a pastor to pray, looking for prophets to profess and people lie into your life. The pastor doesn't know how much hurting you are going through. No, the prophet doesn't know. The predicament you have gone through. God knows it. Why wait that too long? Most of us have waited that too long. And when you say this, you know, because we have become lazy now in this dispensation of grace, and we say, Adum, Adum, is grace, grace. That's what has brought us where we are. Laziness. Steady the word is a problem. Every day, oh, it's a prophet's duty. Hey. <laughs> I can't have a product that when a child should see that delicate eyes of a crab, he want to play with it thinking it's a stick. That's the way most of us are behaving in the realm of the spirit. You wait. <laughs> Haven't you seen I've taken people to pastors and taken people to prophets, they are praying for them when they take them home, they die. That should scare you. Haven't you seen that? They prophesy, they pray. They said, that said the Lord. You shall not die, but live. And they go and they die. Some travel from here and go and meet people and they come and they die. I knew a guy who was drunk hard and they took him out there. I don't want to mention names and they did and they came. They said he has changed just six months. He was even worse than the way he went and it killed him. That very drink killed him. He took money and went. I see God is far away. I came to understand that it's good to understand the scriptures. Because every good that you are seeking for, every miracle that you are looking for, every help, every power that you are seeking for, every honor that you are seeking for is in the word. It's encapsulated in the word. You can make it work. That's my calling and that's what I do. God said we should go and make disciples. People are following after him, not after ourselves. And when you get to know that you, I thank God that anything that I preach on, I've experienced it. I just thank God for that. So that's why I say with all fervency of spirit, I don't cajole. No, 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 no. Everything I preach it, I've gone through it. So it make the scriptures alive in my spirit. Brother says, sister, you can rise up because God says so. You can make it in every facet of life because God says it. Not because man said it. Not because pastor said it. Not because the prophet prophet But because God said it. He's the author of your life. He has the keys to every challenge on this planet earth. He said you are chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praise of him who have called you out of darkness into his mouth. He said let's become the display, the showcase of the glories that God has designed for us, that God's name might be glorified. God doesn't want to see you buffeted here and there. Every day you are in a challenge. What I'm talking about, I'm not talking about money, no. I'm talking about fulfillment in life. Hallelujah. 
you get fulfilled in what you are doing. Praise the Lord. You get success in what you are doing. Praise the Lord. You see, if you know your state or your status or position per time, it gives you boldness and confidence. On the other hand, if you don't know what you are really made of, it makes you look weak. You look very unprofitable. You look rejected and disadvantaged. And most of us are pitch our tent on the other hand. We don't know what we really are in Christ. That's the problem with us in this modern day Charlie, Christian. In this last day, we don't know. We think God has given life. He has given, he's saved us. But the rest of it are well. We have gone to manage it. Who told you? Salvation encapsulates all this beauty and glory I'm talking about. It's all part of salvation. Is it deliverance? That's part of it. Is it wealth and honor? That's part of it. Is it divine help? That's part of it. Is it expressing the wisdom of God? That's part of it. Is it knowing what to do per time? It's part of it. Is it being able to produce the results you desire in life to fulfill dreams, to fulfill your aspirations, to get the job done and doing it better? You excel in what you do. It's all part of salvation. That's part of it. So as a child of God, because of the anointing of God's spirit upon your life, whatever you touch should be a fragrance of his glory. It should excel. It should be very beautiful. Everything you touch, there's a fragrance of God's glory upon your life. It beautifies your life. It beautifies everything you touch. It causes progress in your business. It causes expansion in whatever you do. It brings you to the realm where you begin to reason and think like God because his spirit is indwelling in you. You think like him. You see things like him, you speak like him, you act like him, and the glories of his kingdom becomes your glory as well. That's our life in Christ. People don't want to listen. Unfortunately, sometimes I feel like taking my heart and giving it to somebody and taking their heart and going to sit down by scriptures. And then if I could do that, if God gave that permission, I would have done that at least within the space of one year. I'll tell you, if I don't get that, I can get about five people's hearts. That I can take and then replace it with the knowledge of the word of God. So their faith will come alive. Without faith, it is impossible to believe to please God. That means without the knowledge of the word and understanding, you can't please God. What are these concerns in your life? You are not the one supposed to be beaten and battered. You go to do anything, it's not working. You touch something, it's not blessed. You touch another one, it's ruined. Then you sit down at the comfort of your zone. My goodness, it's time to arise. Some of us can't even sit on our own and say, look, let me fast. This is not what has been ordained for me. Let me fast and seek the face of the Lord. You, don't, you, can't, you can't even let the food go one day. You can't. You can't. And the more you feel your body, the more you become sensual. Hallelujah. The more you do what? You feed your body because your spirit needs the food of God, which is the word of God, and your body needs the food that man plants and eats from the ground. You can't. And sometimes you rise up. If there's any rising up in the night and confronting the issue, you need to. But you sleep and you wake up and you get up in the morning. Mercy, Lord. Lord, mercy, mercy, mercy. <laughs> why me? Why me? <laughs> why me? Thinking your crime will change situation. If you want cry me, they have a song that cry me a river. You can cry an ocean. I'm telling you, it's not going to make the world the thing change. God's looking for industrious people. He said, bring you with words. Come, declare that, that, that must be justified. God said, why should you take out of the situation? You come and make your decrees like a lawyer. Praise the Lord. If you see your state, if you know your status, your position per time, it makes you bold. It brings confidence to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see the prince in the, is it the young one, the young prince in UK? He's now in USA. You know him, I've forgotten that the father was angry with him. Because you know he's a prince, he's doing what he want to do. I forgot his name. I don't want to know his name. That's why I say I forgot his name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He's doing what he wants to do. Is that a problem with the father? He knows he's a prince so that he can be the next of king. 
it's got into his head. It's got into his head. Recently he said something and Donald Trump said, if he comes, you will take him off. He will send him back to his place. If you listen to his response, if you know your status, you become bold. You can be a prince, you don't have money in your pocket, you don't have that authority, you don't have policemen, but you know that no one can catch you, no policeman can lay his hands on you. Don't you know that? You know that. You might now have a security backing you, send you, but when you are walking, you walk everywhere you go, you know you are backed by the nation. We have a greater ruler, the creator of heavens and earth. His unseen eyes are everywhere we are to preserve, to protect. And not only that, what amazes me that when I see Christians giving up is that we have been given the presence of his spirit. And he's there to do great and mighty things with our life. To change the situation, to empower us, to give us direction. To bring joy to our hearts by pouring forth his oil of gladness. To turn our morning to dancing. He's always there. Oh Lord my God. Here we are as Christians. God has shown us a picture of our real status in Christ. Our privileged position in Christ. Our beauty. Per state in the Bible. And the power we have at our disposal. When we receive the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit. Here we are. It's all dito dito. Giving detail in the Bible. Here we are. I will sit down in penury. My goodness. Oh Lord my God. When we begin to understand all this, it makes us and as well as enable us to perform God's intended purposes. We need to know our status in Christ. We need to know it. Brothers, these are the last days. Otherwise, most of us will not make it to heaven. We need to know. We're going to give you the right kind of mindset to take the right steps per time in life. Praise the Lord. Heaven has really endowed us so heavily in Christ that she expects us to perform mighty and wondrous things on this earth before Jesus' second coming. Heaven. Heaven has endowed us. Heaven. Heaven. I want to leave this time now. I want us to stop now. But I want to give us, I'll give us a vivid picture next Sunday concerning the state in which we are as a triumphant church. As a church that the Lord is said we ought to be wrinkle free before he comes. And he sent it for a purpose because he left us in a good state and he has given the presence of his Holy Spirit to come to maintain that good state. So God is expecting to come for a triumphant church. Not a defeated, not a broken. No, no, not a wretched church. No, no. But a church that is taking dominance. A church that is expressing the wisdom of the Almighty God at all sides, His many sided wisdom. A church that is taking the steps. A church that has become like a firebrand plucked from His altar, spreading the gospel everywhere. Everywhere you go, there's a touch of the glory of God upon people's life. That's the kind of church the Lord left. And that's the kind of church He's coming from. Are you part of that? Every time I look at my life and I look at things that goes on in this world and then I sit down to make an informed decision this is the way I choose to go let everybody go the way they want to go but what I've seen in scripture is what I want to walk on Jesus is coming for a church not this weak and bagley church no 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 it's not coming for any weak and bagley church he's coming for a church that has triumphed a church that has won battles in life. A church that have gone through the troop and they have come on head. A church that has jumped over the wall, leaped over the wall and come. So strong and healthy. That's a church that Jesus is coming for. It's not coming for a polluted church. The church in this last is too much polluted. It's become a dancing hall. It's become a concert or it's become a, 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 you, I can't know. That's what the church has become now. No. That's what the church is left. The church now is dressed with the present world order and ideas. That's the way the church is dressed now. With the present world order and ideas. We imbibe the ideas of the world. We go by their, 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 their principles. Unfortunately, we roll ourselves with their, with their filth and debt and with their ideas and their foolish mindsets. Unfortunately, 
It's coming for a church that is looking. It's not coming for a church that is looking weak. Glory. The presence of the Holy Spirit makes all the difference in our life. Most of us have still not come to understand the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life makes all the difference in our life. It makes a difference between us and unbeliever. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. And I'll tell you next week why it makes a difference. It makes a difference. In the mind of Christ, he knows the kind of church he's coming for. In his mind. He was got a picture. He left with that picture. He still maintained that picture. He has not changed his focus. We might change our focus. He has not. He has a standard. We might change the standard. His standard is the shame. Is there. Since the day he left here, the standard remains the same till now. And what to make his judgment inevitable is because he has given us the presence of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'll go and I'll leave you a comforter. Help Pelagratus, another of my kind, who has power and authority as I have, who is coming to keep you to the day of your final adoption. He's become a seal. He's become a signet that when the devil sees you, he knows that, no, this one belongs to God. But what do we see? Now part of us belong to God, part of us belong to the world. It ought not to be so. It ought not to be so. The days are close, the days are near. Is there a matter of time? And we will give account of the beauty he has given to us. We'll give an account. We'll give an account. Somebody bow down your head right now. Thank you. Thank you. Deal with the Lord right now. Thank you. Somebody deal with the Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are a chosen generation. We are a peaceful. We are a holy nation, a peculiar people. And we are meant to show forth the praise of Him who has called us out of dark into His marvelous light. We have been brought into a state, a glorious state, a beautiful state. Our status and position in Christ is amazing. It's beyond what we can think of, it's beyond what our human mind can be able to comprehend. It's beyond the ways of man. Your present state, my present state, is beyond the ways of man. A present state in Christ. If only you will see your state in Christ, if only you will behold the glories God had designed for your life, if only you behold the beauty and the power, the present your spirit, you will make it in every facet of life. You will take long strikes in the realm of the spirit. You will not trade your birthright for a muzzle of meal as some are doing. You will not trade your birthright for a muzzle of meat. Things that do not end eternal glory. You will not trade your life for it. You trade your life for things that will end eternal glory. Shall be on our feet, somebody. Just lift up your hands as a sign of surrender to the Lord. And cry on to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Someone speak to the Lord right now. Bless the Holy Spirit. Thank you for coming to take residence in our life. Thank you. Thank you for your empowerment. Thank you for your glories ordained for our life. Thank you for the beauty you have adorned us in Zion. Thank you. Thank you for the wisdom you have granted us to be able to express not ordinary wisdom but divine wisdom. Thank you. Things that the world cannot be able to come in contact with. You have given it to us. Thank you. Somebody speak to the Lord right now. Let the Lord God of hosts let it might and his power let it be demonstrated in your life. Let it raise you up for his reason and shine. Somebody arise. Somebody arise and shine. Somebody bow forth in tongues and begin to worship the Lord right now. Somebody pray right now. Somebody pray right now. Just bless the Lord and worship him. If he has a fan, I say, praise his holy name. Worship the Lord, somebody. Oh, truly, he has the fan, I say. Lord, we honor you and praise you and adore you and worship you. You are more than we can ever think of. The God of might and of power. For your beauty and your glory, you have robed us with. What a mighty God you are. 
none can be able to comprehend your goodness and your mercy towards us. We praise you, Lord. We honor you, Lord. We adore you, King Jesus. Blessed be your name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May the glory he has designed for our life. May the beauty he has orchestrated from heaven. May the power of his Holy Spirit adequately begin to function our lives like never before in the name of Jesus. That from this day onward, everything you do, because God has a final say on what He has said concerning your life, you will have victory. In the name of Jesus, you will take dominance. In the name of Jesus, you will succeed. In the name of Jesus, you will walk in His steps. In the name of Jesus. The ability to listen to His voice. And to walk in accordance with the same, receive it in the name of Jesus. I decree that the Holy Spirit is teaching somebody here. He's inspiring somebody here to take some faith prepared steps on an issue. Receive power to do the same. And your heart desires are fulfilled in the name of Jesus. Power is granted somebody to take some step and that step shall end up into glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Every word spoken out of your mouth this morning unto the Lord, surely it shall be performed by the Lord, it shall be confirmed by the Lord. And because the word of God has spoken concerning the beauty that God has designed for you in destiny, that beauty surely shall be unveiled. No one will lack the beauty of the Lord from this day forward. It shall radiate upon your life. This beauty shall impact your destiny. This divine beauty shall impact your career and your finances. It shall impact everything that you lay hands on to do in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree the overflow of God's grace upon your life. I decree you turn for your life. If you find yourself in any dilemma, God is granting you access to every situation that you find yourself right now. Because you have heard his voice, he is going to direct your path. This week shall be a week of good news in the name of Jesus. This week power is granted you as you stay before the Lord and make supplications and make intercessions and make prayer of thanksgiving and prayer of faith. Surely the Lord shall hear you, he shall answer you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree someone bless you when you come in, bless you when you go out. Of a certainty. No plaque will come near your dwelling because of the beauty that you are decked in heaven. No wicked force of the enemy will be able to touch you. For the Lord is your deliverer and your salvation in times of trouble. His ever-present help will be there for you at any given moment in time. That's why I see that every weapon of the enemy fashion against you is not going to prosper in the name of Jesus. Accept the glory, accept the beauty. Accept the counsel of the Lord that will stand in your life. Only the counsel of the Lord will work in your life. Every ganging of the powers of darkness militating against your life, I decree that they are coming to naught in the name of Jesus. The ugliness that the enemy is yama for your life is turning to double fame and praise and to a beauty that God has designed for your life. You are becoming more beautiful in every way in the name of Jesus. More beautiful in every way in the name of Jesus. Everything about you is smelling the fragrance of God's beauty from this day forward in the name of Jesus. No more ugliness in your life. No more stagnation. In the mighty name of Jesus. No more retrogression. No more mourning. Only the joy of the Lord is filling your heart. Bible says rejoice, I say rejoice. And that anointing of the oil of gladness is not pour upon somebody this afternoon. Your joy is made full. You will rejoice all the day of your life. Even in the midst of situation, you shall laugh. In the name of Jesus. 
Just as God sits in heaven, he laughs at his enemies, you shall laugh at your enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will go on the right pathway of destiny. The road God has designed for your life, you will find that pathway as the Holy Spirit directs your path. You are getting there. In the name of Jesus.